Hey everybody, thank you for dropping into DeFi TV. My name is Matthew, welcome. So glad you're here. Today, we are gonna talk about how long do you have to wait until it's too late, until you no longer will catch amazing gains during this bull run. Now, I think there's some time. We're gonna talk about it. I'm gonna talk about why I think there's some time. First, we're gonna talk a little bit about global liquidity. You see, look at that trend of total liquidity. Think of it again in a different world. That is the ongoing trend of debasement of currencies. That, when you debase the currency, gives you an optical illusion that asset prices are rising. So this chart of the NASDAQ versus the total liquidity index shows how correlated they are. It's actually 97.5% correlation. There we have a Raul Paul telling us about how global liquidity drives all asset prices. You can hear this from Raul. You can hear this from Michael Howell. Uh, you can hear this from Michael Maloney. And you can hear this pretty much from any gold bug going back for the last 40, 50, 60, 70 years, all telling you the same thing. I really love the work that Raul and Michael Howell have done on diving in deeper to how it's global liquidity and not just the printing of money alone. Basically how easy it is to buy and sell assets in financial markets due to actions on the Federal Reserve balance sheet, due to reserve requirements, due to interest rates, due to lots of things. So really love the work they've done there. We're all able to expand upon that. They, they give away a lot of that work for free. So uh, I, I know I leverage it and I look at it when I can. And so we can pull up charts now um, and look at global liquidity and we can compare it against things. But before we do this, I have to give some credit here to where credit is due. Global liquidity is not an easy metric to get. I find so I've seen some SaaS products out there that charge for it. Uh, but if you go to TradingView, uh, hats off to a member on there named Ingle Forberg. He's created a script that tracks global liquidity, and it looks pretty accurate when you look at it against some of the other charts by the pros. Uh, and basically, he gives what he did to create the script. In other words, he, he gives out his algorithm and his formula right here. Global liquidity index is equal to the Fed plus the uh, minus the uh, Treasury general account minus repo, uh, you know, reverse repos uh, plus ECB plus PC the People's Bank of China, plus the Bank of Japan, plus the Bank of England, plus the Bank of Canada, plus all these central banks. He went deeper than what I've seen the pros do, because a lot of this, a couple of the pros I've seen who track this really well, they just include maybe like the European Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, the Bank of Japan, the People's Bank of China, and the Bank of England. Um, and this can, has a lot more. So this index is very cool. Hats off to you. Thank you. Uh, Ingle Forberg, so you can just, if, you go, if you're on TradingView, you can bookmark this, add it as a favorite, I mean, and once you do that, you can use it as an indicator on your own chart. And so now, when we do that and we overlay uh, yellow here, which is global liquidity, and orange, which is Bitcoin, we can see, we can get a good picture of like what Raul and Michael Howell people are telling us and all the gold bugs throughout history. Uh, basically, yeah, there's a strong correlation between global liquidity and asset prices. And you can also see right here, and this is why I believe you might have a little time still, we see Bitcoin really taking off on an upward direction over the last uh, six, seven, eight months. But we see this global liquidity metric still not necessarily following and it's on its way down. So I feel like one of these has to reverse and it's not easy to get a lead out of these. For example, if you follow these charts closely, maybe if you're not on a log scale, I can go ahead and switch that really quickly. Um, you can see sometimes global liquidity leads, especially on the way up. So you might see global liquidity take off and then Bitcoin follow soon after. But on the way down, you'll see Bitcoin crash first, then global liquidity start to go down. We can see that right here during the pandemic phase. Global liquidity, of course, we saw huge injections. Many of us received that with PPP loans. Uh, and you can see just all kinds of stuff taken off here. Now, Bitcoin did move up a little bit, but then it spiked like crazy. So here, global liquidity led. But then you see here, Bitcoin crashed, started crashing before global liquidity started going down during this last, last long bear market. And we still see global liquidity in a downtrend. Now, 
I was wondering if this is maybe because of the way this is tracked, but when you look at this chart compared to the charts that like we saw uh, on Raul's clip there, they, they're pretty similar. Um, his might not go down as much, but the fractal looks, the pattern looks pretty much the same. So um, my thought here is that I'm not going to be surprised if Bitcoin comes down more, and I wouldn't be surprised to see the NASDAQ and the stock market maybe come down a little too. It's been on a tear, and global liquidity here is still headed down. Now, that what I've just said is, is, is what's happening now. But investors don't generally trade on what's happening now or invest on what's happening now. They are looking three, four, five, six, seven, eight months, a couple years out, depending. Uh, and so if you're looking three months out from now, four months out, five months out, around election time, you know, it's going to be a different story. And you're going to people are going to smart investors are going to want to invest now take their positions now based on what they think it will be like around that time, about six months from now. And so if these start coming down, if we see asset prices start dropping, especially within the stock market, we're probably going to hear news about the Fed starting to ease. And then before we see this yellow line start to tick up, we will probably see um, Maybe some asset prices start to surge, or maybe this this will tick up first again, like it often does, and then the prices will surge. But to me, this tells me you probably have one, two, three, four, five months left. I've also done some work, and you can see this in previous videos I've done before. I won't I won't repeat the whole thing, but basically, if you uh, look at the altcoins po post Bitcoin having for all the cycles, at least the last two altcoins haven't gotten going strongly until maybe five to six months after the Bitcoin having. Uh, Bitcoin itself can take two, three, four months. Last cycle, it took about four months until it really started to rip again. And then the altcoins followed suit one, two, up to three months after that. So that was about five, six months, almost seven months after the Bitcoin having until we saw alts tear again, last bull run. So keep that in mind as well. We had our the latest having on April 20th, 2024, April 19th, depending on your time zone. So, you know, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. That's still a few months before we could see alts start to rip. The election's going to be closing in. Maybe it looks like maybe Trump's going to win. I think that could, could be huge for crypto, although the Democrats, like I mentioned earlier, have changed their stance. I think they listened to Trump talking about being the pro-crypto president, and they probably realized, oh, he must be doing this for a reason. Maybe there's a lot of uh, votes that can be gained there by being pro-crypto. So that'll be fun to watch play out. And then finally, you know, there's the classic summer saying. And then lastly, I think is we get to the summertime, right? You see this, a lot of people in the public markets will say, you know, invest till May and then go away. And so you start to see some of that as well here where people are seeing these really explosive moves at the beginning of the year. And then also Q4 tends to be a big uh, kind of quarter for crypto as well. And so Q2 into Q3 tends to go kind of sideways. I think that's just what we're seeing. There we have Anthony Pompliano reminding us of the old school saying, sell in May and go away. So we're we're in we're just starting officially summer summer not crypto summer but you know the summer season here in the uh, in the uh, well in the United States and this part of the world so yeah we'll see it sounds like right there it could be slow for the next month or two as well I wouldn't be surprised now as of the recording of this video we've had kind of a fun day after a huge Bitcoin crash yesterday huge relatively speaking. Uh, we're seeing a little bit of a reversal today. Solana had some really good news. That's kind of coming back around, uh, launched some really cool features. So, but uh, overall, I'm not going to be surprised if this thing goes sideways and even down a little bit more. If crypto assets go down a little bit more and sideways for another month or two. So it looks like you have a little time. Now, will this be your last chance forever? I mean, it just depends, you know, it depends on what you're buying. If you're buying Bitcoin, I'm finding it hard to believe that this thing's going to continue to have 80, 90 percent crashes in the future. Now that we have uh, Main Street coming in with all the ETFs, same with Ethereum. But I do believe there will be other chances for altcoins that are not in ETFs during the next bear market. I think some of those will crash again 90 percent and I will be there to scoop them up and have fun for another bull run.
whenever that starts, maybe 2027, 2028. Either way, this is gonna be fun, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you are stacking if you're looking to acquire more because right now, you have an opportunity if you weren't able to stack back in October of 2023 when things started taking off and you kind of missed the boat, you get one more chance, it looks like, to catch some major profits this bull run if it continues on, which I believe it will. Of course, nothing here is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. All right, everyone, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.